Hello everybody, my name is Chris, and this is my channel, Barnon11970, and as always, I want to start out my video by thanking you for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. And this is going to be a video that is not going to be for everybody, and that is perfectly fine, because this video, as you can see in the title, you were drawn to this. Your curiosity found a way to bring you something that you may have been asking yourself even subconsciously or are ready to get certain questions asked and I want to help you with that now there will be very few people that will even find this video very few people that will watch it and even fewer people who will watch to the end and what I like to call understand it so don't waste this opportunity if you trust your instincts and you know you were here and you want to find out why watch this entire video because I pretty much can guarantee that those that do and that felt that they were drawn to this video for whatever reason you will have some kind of answers resolved because I've had many videos where people will state that a video that I made happened just at the exact moment that they needed it and that is not a coincidence energy can be attracted it all has to do with energy and magnetism. So with that being said, let me give you first a little background. My initial beginnings of the quote-unquote awakening movement started around the year 2011. A lot of people have started to feel changes as of 2012, but I felt it a little bit earlier. And at the time, I was basically dropped the truth bomb by somebody that just came out of nowhere. And it took me until now, and today is the 18th of June, 2018, so over seven years later, and I like the fact that it's the number seven, um, to draw everything to a pretty near conclusion. And there are a lot of steps in the way, and a lot of changes along the way. And if you followed me from my beginnings back on my original channel... You start out very angry, very confused, very scared. Emotions play a big part. And what I've realized, and one of the things I like to say is you must realize, you must have real eyes to realize that the lower emotions are to keep you on a lower vibrational level which makes you easier and more susceptible to control and influence. That's where fear and anger come into play so if you're at this point and you're watching this and you feel like it's the right thing you're gonna what I like to call understand the things that I'm about to talk about and it all talks about this illusion and this game that we're in because it ultimately is a game and what is interesting is most people don't even know they're playing it so I want to talk about how the journey and why it can take long because no information is ever presented to you at a time when you cannot gain something from it all situations come to you that can influence your life in a positive way at the right time so I know a lot of people out there get frustrated when they are trying to find the quote-unquote truth I was the same way for years, it's like, why is it taking so long? Why can't I find it? Well, the answer is, I wasn't ready to hear it, and I couldn't accept it. And that's why very few people will even be able to accept this video, because of the fact that they're not ready. So, why waste the opportunity? The good thing about a video like this is, it will be here, even when somebody may initially not be ready, one day may stumble on this again, and be able to understand it. So think of it in this aspect. Let's say you are going to meet your soulmate at some point in your life, but you only get one opportunity to meet that soulmate. Now, what if that one moment was when you were both born and you're right next to each other as infants, just being born in a hospital? Do you think you're going to be able to communicate with your soulmate at that time do you think you will be able to benefit from that meeting if that was the only one chance you had 
Of course not. So it would be a waste of an opportunity if something presents itself at a time when it's not going to benefit you. So that's why it can take a long time, including multiple lifetimes, to finally get to where you're ready. So if you're not ready, don't force it, because then you will listen to information and dismiss it. You will be repelled from it. You'll get confused or frustrated. And that's what happened in the beginning of my journey, and I'm sure everybody's journeys, that are seeking a higher conclusion to what we call life. So with that being said, I want you to picture the world that we're in in this scenario like a video game. I want you to think of yourself as one of the best gamers out there. Every game you play, you eventually master to the point where you start getting bored because all the games that are presenting themselves create no challenge to you. Or even if they did, you always figure out how to win. And you're trying desperately to find a game that will keep you challenged. And all of a sudden, somebody comes along. They hear your call and say, well, I'm going to give you the best game of your entire life. And here's the best part. You can create everything in this game yourself. So you're not subject to somebody else creating a game that you do not find challenging, that you may find too easy or too predictable. So if you want a challenge, here you go. We're going to give you a game that you can create. You create all the enemies. You create all of the conflicts, all of the storylines, all of the mazes, all of the rewards, you create them all. And other people are allowed to join this game. Now think of it like today with online gaming. Have you ever played a game where you log into a online game where there are plenty of other people playing? Now in the game, there are some who are actual players, and there are some who are what they call NPCs non-playable characters. In other words, they are part of the game itself. So even though they may be on your quote-unquote team, or they might be the opposition, they are not controlled by you or anyone else. They are programmed into the game. So let's say you accept this challenge. Now the challenge is, this is the part where it gets interesting. It's not like any video game where you can have your character progress a certain level and if you die, you can start over again and remember where you left off so you can progressively get better and better until you finally beat the game. This game, and you agree to this, is you say, okay, you're going to create the game. You're going to make it as hard as you can. And when you log into this game, when you put the headset on, because it is virtual reality, that machine is going to erase your memory. Now, you will be transported like the movie Tron or any other movie that has you go into a game. You are going to get transferred into the game itself. But you won't know it's a game. And you won't know that you're playing the game. And here's the object of the game. Find your way out. Now, every time you quote-unquote die, for those of you who believe in reincarnation, think of it like a video game. When you die, what happens? You get brought back. You have an extra life. So you keep continuing to play the game, but this is a game you don't know is a game. This is a game that you don't know is real. This is a game where the object of the game is to find your way out, even though you don't know you're in something that has that object. You agreed to this challenge, knowing full well that you would be entering into a game where you would think it is quote-unquote reality. And you will not remember that you're in the game. 
So the game itself is to find a way out in its most challenging way. And since you've created your game, the NPCs or non-playing characters are people or things or situations that influence you during this game. So your game starts when you're born. And you will have, the game is programmed to keep you in a lower vibration, to keep you angry and scared. Because you don't know what's going on, the fear of the unknown. And that can easily influence you. So let's say part of the game you made is, get it's like making a maze. Where you made the maze but forgot where the exit is. And you created monsters or obstacles that are designed to stop you. Now, like any video game, a video game character, let's say you meet a boss in a video game, it doesn't have emotion that it's hurting you. It doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel empathy or sympathy. It's just doing what it's programmed to do. So you were so good at these type of video games that you wanted the ultimate challenge and you wanted it so difficult that you controlled the creation of the very game that you would forget that you're playing so you ever wonder why there are so many situations in your life that are keeping you down that are sh making you struggle that things don't always seem to go your way and yet somehow you always find a way to just get by do you ever notice that you've never not had enough to survive? That even when things are down, even when you don't have all the luxuries that some of these NPC players have to make you feel inferior in the game, but you always have just enough to get by? And every time you use your emotions, which is part of your control of the system, that's your video game controller, is your emotions that it could take you to the lower levels of the dungeons to ultimately the escape of the dungeon. And the trick is to go from an infant that knows nothing and needs to be taken care of to growing up with nothing but obstacles and the pieces of the game trying to keep you in the game because their job is to keep you in the game and not ever finding out that you are in a game that you somehow get to the point where little by little you learn a little bit more and you get a little bit more comfortable and understanding, or again, what I like to call inner standing, to the point where one day you start to realize, because you need real eyes to realize, that you are actually in a game and your job is to finally break free. And once you realize you're in a game and you have ultimate control of the game to a certain extent, and I'll explain that in a moment, you will find your way out, and it will be the last time you visit. And it's like playing that ultimate VR game where you just you finally beat the game, even though it was seemed like it was impossible. You just take off the headset, and you go wherever you're supposed to go from there. But so many people will make you think of that law of attraction as you can change everything. You cannot. Because think about, like again, logging into a game where other people are playing. Now, you can influence those people. You can shoot the player, or you can trash talk them to the point where they rage quit. You can affect them, but you cannot play the game for them. And one of the things that kind of traps us and keeps us grounded, one of the emotions is love. Because of the things that you will do or stop yourself from doing, to not harm others. It's, it's, it's a part of a trap. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't love people and you shouldn't respect people. You absolutely should. But make no mistake, it is an influence to keep you playing the game. Because you were so good at programming this game, you made sure the AI, the non-playable characters, the ones that are in the game that you created, their sole purpose in the game is to keep you in the game and keep you from escaping. You have to raise your vibration. What does that mean? Like I've said in other videos, think of it like a cat on the ground trying to chase a bird. Well, a cat can only chase the bird if the bird is on the ground. 
If the bird is flying in the airway above, that cat knows that bird's there. That cat may even see that bird and even want that bird, and maybe try and do everything to convince that bird to come down. But as long as that bird is soaring way above, it's untouchable. But like a bird, you have the choice to come down at any moment. Based on a belief system. Because remember, there's the word lie in belief. Because whether you believe something is right or wrong, whether you believe something is true or false, need, both answers are to keep you here, to keep you trapped. It's part of the system. Because either one, you don't know. And that's why in knowledge, there is the word no. And that is why if you're still listening to this point and it seems to be resonating with you, you're not going to sit there and believe this. You're going to feel it. You're going to know that this is right. Now, it's not going to be right for everyone. Like I said, there are plenty of people in your life that could possibly include family members that are part of the game that you've created. And their job is to create emotion because emotion creates energy. That's why emotion, energy in motion. So not all players are the bad guy or the bad girl. Some of them are there to guide you, push you in another direction, because your emotions create energy. Energy is what keeps the game going. You can't play an Xbox if it's not plugged in. And you even if you plug it in, if there's no electric current to keep the game going, the game shuts down. But remember, while you're playing an online game, you can interact with other characters. You have certain ways that you can have them go in your way. They can, you can convince somebody to shoot you, or to shoot along with you, or like I said, to rage quit and disappear from the game. It's all about different frequencies as well when they talk about different frequencies and how you cannot see them all at once or hear them all at once. Well, just think of it if you were listening to the radio. If you're listening to 106.3, you cannot hear what's on 98.6. Now, that doesn't mean that that channel and all the channels in between don't exist. It just means your frequency is not set to that particular level to be able to hear it. So it's all out there. It all depends on you realizing that there is a radio and there is different signals and there is a knob that you can control to hear what frequency you want. So there's going to be distractions along the way because the, the, the game is to get out, but you never knew. So now that you know Few people are going to know that this is why they watched this video to this point. So knowing that this is a game and knowing it's an illusion and knowing that you contracted yourself and agreed to this beforehand, it should make you help yourself to think differently about what causes you pain what causes you to overreact to something, to be extremely angry, or to associate yourself with people who do nothing but make you sad, depressed, angry, fearful. What if those are some of the NPCs of the game doing their job to create as, take as much energy from you as you can to keep you in the game? I find that quite interesting, and the best part is, very few people are going to get this. They're not at the level. Many people that may find this because maybe you want to show it to them will think it's absolutely ridiculous. It's all about choice. Because like in a video game, you can control where your character goes. But that doesn't mean there aren't going to be situations or people along the way that aren't going to try and stop you or slow you down or give you misdirection or make you just want to rage quit. Here's the thing. This game that you agreed to never ends until you escape. So even if you rage quit, the game is not over. 
you're just not progressing. So if you're one of those people that gives up all the time, you're just taking that much more time away from you finding source to, for you to exit the game and beat it. So it's easy to give up. The game is geared to make you sad and want to give up or not even try or believe or not believe in things. Know thyself. It doesn't say believe thyself. The saying is know thyself. So now that you have a brief in and I say brief because there's so much more to it, but here's the thing. My job is to think of it like a you're you're playing a video game and you get to a point where you're lost and all of a sudden there's a store where there's a wizard or somebody or a, a character that just explains where you're supposed to go next. Their job is to just point the direction. It's your job to travel it. Because let's say you're lost at a certain point of a game. Let's say you're playing like a D&D &D kind of game, an adventure game. And you get lost and you finally find an, a non-playing character, an NPC, an AI in the game that says, okay, you have to go to that mountain that you see up north. You have to climb that mountain. There'll be a castle. You have to go in that castle. You have to solve all its puzzles. You have to defeat the the demon or the dragon or the monster in there and find a key and that will help you open the door to the next level well you can only do that if you decide to go if you decide to say oh that person doesn't know what he's talking about or oh that's too much I, I can't do that that's too difficult and you don't do it well guess what you have chosen to not do what it takes to get to the next level so is it any wonder that the things in your life that bring you down, that make you depressed, make you give up, keep continually happening. Think of it as a game that has artificial intelligence, that once it knows how to keep you down, it's going to continue to do that. Because just imagine, let's just suppose that the AI in this game may not have consciousness, but it has awareness. And it knows that it's quote-unquote life only exists because the game is still in play and once you find the way out the game shuts down and those entities cease to exist it kind of make you wonder about all those movies and all those rumors and theories and conspiracy theories you've heard about very wealthy people trying to do everything that they can to not die to prolong their lives because maybe one of the secrets that they refuse to tell anybody is that they understand or understand that they do not have souls and they are just a computer program that will only stay relevant as long as the game is being played. So if you created the game where the enemies and the obstacles learn from your mistakes and learn how to control you and learn that as long as they keep you in the game they are still alive and still relevant and still exist well wouldn't they do everything in their power to keep you here including telling you things that are not true and that's why I tell people don't believe what I say if you don't know it you're not ready many people will not believe this very few will have listened to this this far and if you've listened to this far, you might be one of those people that's ready. Now, that can change at any moment, because like in a game, all of a sudden an obstacle can come along that's so frustrating, you just give up. Well, do you think you'll ever beat a game if you give up playing it? Can't escape the game, which means you'll have to continually play it. So if you want to beat the game, if you finally want to say, this is my last visit... Use these tools to get yourself to that next level. Understand that this is an illusion, that it's all just electricity and sensation. And things get drawn to you, not by what you hope, not by what you pray for, not what you think about, but how what you feel. You ever notice that just when things are at their worst and you feel like there's nothing left, all of a sudden something comes along to help you just at the last moment? 
That's your energy that you don't realize that you have. And what the game is trying to keep you from ever having. Because just imagine if you were part of the game in the sense that you were one of the pieces that somebody else created. That you don't have a soul. And you finally realize that you're part of this game and you will only live as long as as your character survives or the game continues to play. You hear all these theories about vampires or very wealthy people like exchanging their blood and trying to keep their youth. Well, it kind of puts it in a, an interesting perspective and kind of makes sense that what if these people know that once they close their eyes, they never wake again. They would want to do everything in their power to prevent that from happening. Or maybe even players that are here that are so drawn to the materialistic part of the game. Because like in a video game, you can reap a lot of rewards. And maybe you're playing a game that is just so much fun, you don't ever want it to end. So you get drawn into getting all of the treasures. Or the joy of being able to do something that you probably couldn't do in quote-unquote real life. Some people don't want to leave the game or don't want to know. Because like they say, ignorance is bliss. So if you're struggling, remember it is always a choice. You cannot control the other players in the game. Like I said, you can to a certain extent. But you can't play their game for them. Which means if you spent your life holding yourself back because of loved ones, hoping that they will understand or understand what you do, and they don't do it, it just means they're not ready to find out. They don't want to find out, or they're not what you think they are. Now, it's not your job to figure out which ones they are. Think of it like the game. If you and your friend are playing an online game, you're not playing the game for them. So even if you're trying to say, oh, go this direction, it's the best way to go, and they decide, you know what, I want to take the route where more enemies are because it's just more fun. I like the challenge. If that's what they're set on, you cannot convince them. And all you're doing is, is stopping your game. Because just imagine there are two paths in a video game. One of them's a pretty easy path, but it doesn't create much of a challenge. And the other, you have to go through tons of enemies, but you'll get much bigger rewards if you go in that direction. And let's say you're one of those people that doesn't like confrontation, so you want to take the easier route. Now, you won't get as much treasure, but you're okay with that because you don't have to do as, as much fighting. Well, if you're playing with a friend and you're trying to sit there and you are stop playing by because you're trying to convince this person, you're both at the crossroad, and you're saying, all right, let's go left, it's easier. So your characters are not moving right now. You're both at that crossroad. And you want to take the easier route. And your friend doesn't want to take the easier route. They're like, you know what? I'm up for the challenge. I want to go right because that's where all the enemies are. And that's where the greater prize is. So I want to go in that direction. Well, you can finally decide, okay, I can't control what you do. I'm going to go left and continue to play. Or you could spend your whole life staying at that crossroad trying to convince that other person. So both of you become stagnant and both of you go nowhere. Or you continue on and say, okay, I'll meet you on the other side. We will meet again. You take the high road and I'll take the low road. It's all a matter of choice. And if you spend your whole life, like they say, drowning in good intention. And I was the same way. I wanted to save the world. And the more I tried to save the world, the more the world put up its middle finger and said, the heck with you. And I got all this hate and all these attacks. And all I was doing is keeping myself stagnant because instead of trying to get myself to finish the game... I was too busy staying stagnant trying to help others when maybe they wanted to go in a different direction. Maybe they didn't even want to play the game. Maybe they were just happy where they were. Misery does love company. So, if you watch this far, I, I can pretty much guarantee that this has put another piece in your puzzle. It may not have solved it, because my job is not to finish the game for you. My job is to say, 
See that mountain? Climb that mountain. Go into that castle. Solve all the problems. Defeat the monster. Get the key, and you will reach the next level. You have to choose to do that. You don't have to. But the longer you don't try and solve the pu next puzzle to get you to the next level, the longer the game is played. And if the object of the game is to escape the game, well, if you are sitting there depressed and unmotivated and full of fear, the only person you ultimately are hurting is yourself because technically nobody's around you. And you could believe that, or you can not believe that. But until you know, you're trapped either way. And that's why I talk about the illusion of the glass is half full, or the glass is half empty. Either one is wrong. So the idea of this world is, like they say, black and white, light and dark, good and bad, male and female. It's all one choice or another, Republican or Democrat. Look how that's working out. The idea is to make you have a choice, but either choice is wrong. Because the glass is neither half full nor half empty. The glass is completely full. Because I've never once said, is the glass half full or half empty with water? You assume that. And that is what this matrix is all about, is making you go in a direction that you may not even think about. And that is why so many people want others to take care of them. Be careful what you wish for, you might get it. And that is why, especially if you listen this far, you're probably most likely a loner. You probably don't want to associate, or you cannot connect with other people. It's because you are leading your own life. You are playing your own game. You're not spending all of your game characters' lives trying to play somebody else's game. So there's a reason for that. There are prices to pay. You will feel alone. Maybe you're not as attractive. Because maybe the less attractive somebody is, the less likely other people will influence your life and change it and ultimately stop you from your goal of leaving the game. What if extreme beauty is a curse? Because just imagine how many entities get pulled in towards something beautiful. Distractions. So don't look at it as if you're overweight or you have a deformity or if you have an illness or you're losing your hair or you lost a tooth or something like that. Don't see it as a, as a defeat. Maybe it's your way of concentrating on just the game. No distractions. And if you think of it in that way and think of it in a more positive way, it's going to make you want to keep playing the game to ultimately get out. So if you want to get out of the game, you first have to know you are playing it and understand the rules or understand the rules because you were agreeing that when you entered this game you would have no memory of it so 99.999 percent of what's in this game will think you're crazy make you change your mind because they exist as long as you exist in this game once you leave the game shuts down just like any video game that no longer is played. Remember the original Xbox? How many people you still think are playing those online games, the first ones that came out? Once nobody plays anymore, the game gets shut down. So all of the creatures in the game, all of the monsters, all of the worlds that were built in those games, all the obstacles, they cease to exist. Like the movie Never Ending Story, The, the Great Nothing. If you're not playing the game, the game ceases to exist. And that's why if you know anything about quantum physics and quantum mechanics, it's the actual visual observation of something that creates it. You don't have to believe in that or not. What is, is. Let things resonate with you. Listen and trust your instincts. Stay away from the negative emotions. Use your sense of observation when you witness things now. You can choose whatever you want. You can choose to think this is complete BS. It's up to you. It's your game. Think of me as the dungeon master trying to teach you where to go. 
I can't force you to go in a direction. It's not my purpose. But I can show the way. And plenty of times in your life you've come across paths that made you decide to go in a different route or try something different or give up on something you thought it was the world for you at that moment, whether that's a relationship or a job or whatever. Everything comes at the right reasons. And I want you to see, after about a week or two of this video being up, read the comments, because I guarantee you there will be people that will write in the comment section, this is exactly what I needed. And the sad part is, most people will think that's a coincidence. That's up to them. So if you listen this far, I want you to put in the comment section the title of what you see here of this video. You were drawn here, now find out why. Put that in the comment section. And let me know what you thought about this. And be honest. But the only thing I ask is be respectful. Because any negativity, I'm just going to ignore it because it's no longer something I need. Now, that is not going to stop people from maybe saying this is crazy. Or maybe saying I'm crazy or insulting me or doing whatever. I cannot control the game they decide to play. But I can control how I react to it. So the negativity that now comes my way, I no longer let it affect me the way it once did. And that's how you progress from one level to the next. It's learning from your mistakes and growing. It's like the movie um, Groundhog Day. The only difference is each time you wake up from that bed at 6 o'clock in the morning and you hear the share music going on in the alarm, you don't remember that you already woke up millions of times before. So Bill Murray was able to solve his matrix knowing that he was in it and it kept repeating so he progressed easier now just imagine that movie where every day you think when you wake up that's the first time you ever did it how much harder would it be to first realize that you're in a game and then get out of it like Bill Murray did and even with the knowledge of him knowing it took him decades to finally keep repeating things to the point where he perfected it in the way that got him out of it. Just imagine how many millennia it took you to get to this point. But here's the beautiful thing. You've made it this far. Why regress? Just imagine if you're playing like a game like Halo, where you started in the beginning, you played all of these times, you played on the superest hard mode, and it took you months to get to the end. And right before you're about to finish the game, you decide, you know what, I'm going to backtrack. I'm just going to run all the way back to the beginning. How dumb would that be? You're this close to the edge to finishing the game. Do you want to finish it or keep playing? That's up to you. But at least now you know you have a choice, and I guarantee you this answered the questions of some who were asking. Don't ask a question if you're ever afraid to hear the answer. Because then it's just another wasted opportunity. So if you appreciated this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and I would love for you to share it. Whether you do or not is up to you. If you want to check out my Patreon account and show some support or anything else to that effect, I would also appreciate it. But again, not mandatory, not to be expected. Sharing this you may get a good response, you may get a horrible response. Again, you can't control what anybody else does. So whether you decide to share it or not, or just keep it to yourself, that's up to you. But if you know of anybody that's close to these levels to where they could understand this kind of video, it is your job to pass it along and help others get out of the game. Now, I've always said for a long time that this is my last go around on this roller coaster. And now I know why. And you can too, if you so choose. And just always remember, it's always a choice. You can choose to believe, you can choose to not believe. You can choose to be angry, you can choose to be depressed, you can choose to, to, to go for every materialistic thing that you think makes you happy. And just dive in your gold coins and your swimming pools filled with beautiful men or women. The choice is yours, but you control the game. And now that you realize that you are the dungeon master, maybe it was you telling you this all along. Thanks for listening. I look forward to the comments, and have a great day.